Hi, this is problem 4.24. In this case, they want us to reduce the system to point A, and then the second part is reduce the system to single force that interstate a b which is this vertical column and b c so let's start for part a which means finding the resultant force and the resultant moment respect to a to find the resultant force we know that we have to add all these forces together. So it will be F1 plus F2 plus F3. Let's see, this is F1, F2, and F3. So that will be equals to. As you see, F1 is 175 in I direction, negative. F2, which is this force right here, will be negative 60 in J. And this force right here, which is F3, will be, has two components, right? It will be negative in I, because it's pointed this way, so we have a negative Fx and a Fy, right? So this angle right here, we can call it theta, is the same as this angle right here. So to get the X component is the cosine of this angle, which is 3 over 5. So that will be 250, 3 over 5, in I, negative, we said, let me put it here, give me some space to write the negative. And then in J is also negative, 350, and in this case, the J will be 4 fifth in J. Therefore, if I add these two values of I and these two values of J, I get the resultant force. I have the result right here. Give me negative 325 in I, negative 260 in J. And this all is in pounds. This is as a vector. If we want to find the magnitude will be the square root of 325 square plus 260 square, and that gives me a magnitude of 416 pounds. So it means that my resultant force, let me draw it here in pink, my resultant force is a force that is like that, negative in I and negative in J, right? And if I want to find this angle over here, will be the tangent of Fy, so over Fx, which will be 260 over 325, and phi will be equals to 38.6. Be careful that this angle, in order to have the real angle that is measured from x, either we have to make, uh, so add 180, so that will be the real angle that we have to report as the angle of the force or subtract 80 and get a negative value of the. So that will be negative 180 or 180 minus 50. And I will give a negative value of the angle.
Okay, so it's very important to know what we are measuring when we take the tangent. So my real angle, let me write it right here, will be 38.7 plus 180, which is equals to 118.7. Okay, so we were able to find this part of our first uh, part of the problem. Now we have to find the moment respect to A. So the moment respect to A, let me get it right here, will be the moment produced by each of these forces. So it will be produ moment produced by F1, if this is F1, plus the moment produced I will do it a scalar approach, so I'm not going to write the vector. And M A of F3. So what is the moment produced by the first force? Is five is the distance, and 175 is the force, and what is the direction? So I place my hand. My distance will be my palm. Here's the point where I'm taking the moment A, and I curl my fingers. That gives me a contraclockwise. And as you recall, so moment, if this is my axis, my moment will be contraclockwise, will be positive. So this is a positive moment. If we take the moment of this force F2, I will slide my force so that till I have a perpendicular distance. And this perpendicular distance is three. The force is 60. And again, I have to analyze the sign of this moment. I pull, pull my hands here, the point where I'm taking moment, I curl my fingers towards the force and I get a clockwise. So this moment over here is negative. Then I have the force, the moment produced by the third force, right? So as you know, it has two components. I will slide the first component over here, which is this perpendicular distance, which is eight, and that moment will be negative. Negative eight times 250. This component is four over five. And then I have this moment over here. I will slide it, these forces, till I get the perpendicular distance. This distance is 11 feet. So and this moment, I place my finger, my, my palm here towards the distance, and I curl my fingers towards the force and give me a positive moment. So it will be 11 times 250 times the cosine of this angle, which is 330. Adding, adding this, well, I have to multiply, then multiply and subtract, multiply and subtract, and multiply and add. I get the moment, and I will write the result is 745 pounds, which is the unit that the four has, times feet. And this is the result for the moment. What is the sign? Since I got a positive value, I know that this moment is contraclockwise. So we were able to find then the moment to reduce the system. So we have a resultant force and a resultant moment that gives me in contraclockwise, so moment at A. So I was able to reduce the system to a single force and a single moment at point A. Questions two says that I want to reduce the system to a single force that intercepts A and B. So as you know, the resultant force is called the invariant. So it doesn't matter where we place our force, it will give us the same value for the resultant force. What it varies is the moment. So I have, I am, since this is perpendicular to that, because this is in k direction, right? Perpendicular to 
my plane where I'm working right here, I can further reduce the system to a single force. So where will that force be located? So they ask us to find where will be located if we intersect it with AB and where will be it located with if we intersect it with BC. So let's say that we want to translate this force over here, right? gets a little bit greater. So I have to find this distance y, and as you see, I can also place it over here, and that will be intercepting BC. So let's start placing my force over here. So this is part number two, and I will find y to farther reduce system to single force intercepting A, B. So I will calculate the moment produced by that single force as you see here, this force can be decomposed in x. My, my drawing is getting a little bit crowded. Let me fix that. So I was, I had a moment at a, and now I have this force over here. I want this can be decomposed in f resultant in x as resultant in y, right? So, if I take the moment respect to i, for that force it will be y f r x, right? Which is negative, which is this value over here, and that gives me a positive moment, plus what will be the distance? As you see, the y component doesn't produce any moment. So the distance, the perpendicular distance is zero. So, and that moment over here, so it will be a positive moment because I, even though this is negative, when I place my right hand rule, give me a positive moment. So this force negative is producing a, a positive moment respect to point A. So that will be Y, 325, and this moment over here, I want to make it equivalent to the moment I found when I place the force over here, so it will be equal to that. So that's 745. Therefore, in order to have an equivalent system where I can reduce the system to a single force that produce, produce the same moment at A, I have to place it at, I will solve for Y, and I get that Y is equals to 229 feet. So in order to have an equivalent system with only a resultant force that intersects AB, it has to be placed at 2.29 feet. And if I do the same, but now intersecting BC, then I have to put this force over here, right here. my resultant force over here. So this is the line of action of the force. So if I slide this force over here, so it intercepts B and C, what is the moment that these forces produces? So here I have 11 times, so the moment will be 11 times FRx, right? and that's a moment that is positive, minus this 
x that I don't know how much it is, minus x times f r y. So this is 11 times 325, and I use the absolute value because I already did the multiplication, and I got a positive moment, minus x times 260. And that moment of this force should be the same as this one right here because we want equivalent system. So now I can solve for x seven hundred and forty five minus right the multiplication of those two values which is three seventy three five 75 over negative 260. So x gives me a value of 10.98. So the conclusion is that I can reduce the system to point A and then I get a resultant force and a resultant moment. I can further reduce the system to a force that intercepts AB, in which case we use this equation, and this force has to be placed over AB at 2.29 feet. If I want a system that is only a single force but that intercepts BC, I have to slide my force over here and I have to place it at 10.9 feet from B to have an equivalent system that produce the same moment as we calculate initially at A. And this is the solution of this problem.